field. There are a lot of boys in our high schools identifying as girls and being allowed to compete with the girls in damn near any female sport. And that is just fundamentally wrong. Because if we don't push back against this gender madness now, uh, it, it will overtake us. The Joe Walsh Radio Program. Weeknights at 9, right after Larry Elder at 7, on AM 1250. The Answer. It's a TV show. Uh, In case you have had trouble dealing with your life today, I'm here to remind you that Game of Thrones is a TV show. Pretty bad one, if you ask me, but it's not real. Uh, The last episode on HBO was last night, and if you haven't seen it, don't worry, I'm not going to spoil it for you. I didn't watch, so I don't know how it ended, but I do know a lot of people don't like the way it ended. Over 19 million people uh, did watch it last night, and apparently lots of people are really upset. They didn't like the way it ended. So there's a petition out there, believe it or not, there's a petition out there that's been signed by over a million people. That's right. Over a million people wasted the energy it takes to sign, whether it's, I'm assuming it's online, but just the matter of, Wasting the energy that it, to move your thumbs to sign it, demanding that HBO remake season eight. Now, of course, if HBO did that, you would get season nine. But I, you know, that's, and what what are you going to do? Have a vote on how it should end? Again, I don't know how it ended. I know that it upset people, but uh, maybe people ought to get over it. The New York Post uh, had a story today about an online service that is offering counselors for people who are having trouble dealing with the ending. Again, it's a TV show. It's not real. The service is called Bark.com. And I guess, I think it started as a dog walking service and then started, you know, for people looking for someone to walk their dog and it's in the UK. And so now it does everything, including finding counselors for people. Uh, But Lynette is one of the counselors there. And this is what she said, quote, We watch them to escape our daily lives and immerse ourselves into the unknown. This is the very reason when we sometimes become addicted to watching them. The stories become part of our identity. Now, maybe the people who allow a TV show and the characters involved to become part of their identity, maybe they really need the counseling, not to help them get over the fact that they did allow it to become part of their identity, but the fact that they allowed it in the first place. That would seem to me to be a pretty good reason to go to a shrink. So so I used to run around the house with a towel pinned to the back of my T-shirt because I really liked watching Superman on TV. I thought I was Superman. Of course, I was eight at the time. Uh, These are adults who become emotional after watching a TV show. And when the show ended last night, the response should, the response should have been, okay, what's on now? <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, Game of Thrones is over. What's next? Or are we going to bed? Or you know, what's up? No need to feel cheated or upset. It's a TV show. And I did try to watch it a few times, by the way. I tried it when it first came on. I lasted a few episodes. I had seen the previews. I thought it was uh, actually a show that I might like because I, I like period pieces. And I thought it was a drama set in medieval times, and uh, it looked like it might be pretty good, something different. Then they introduced the dragons, and then I found out from Aaron, our producer, that they also had fairies, which I never got around to. I didn't see the fairies. That would have gotten rid of me quicker than the dragons, but I don't know which came first. But anyway, the dragons, that's when I decided I saw the dragon eggs, and they lost me. When everybody continued to rave about it, I thought I'd give it another shot. I tried to pick it up a few times. Uh, Again, you know, here and there, I'd sit and watch, try to watch an episode and think, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to watch this. Other than the naked women, I, uh, I really saw no reason to watch, and I think the soft porn aspect to it might have something to do with the big numbers it got. That's just an outside chance, but it might have something to do with it, especially among teenagers. Anyway, I also had a problem with everybody being a little too, uh, too well quaffed. Um, everybody's hair looked a little too clean. And a little, I don't know, too well styled uh, for the medieval times. Uh, 
and um, the clothes look like they maybe just came back from the dry cleaners. And if it's a period piece, I like them to be a little bit more realistic. So I'm not disappointed in the ending, and I don't need counseling because I, I didn't watch. But if you did watch, you shouldn't need counseling because it was a TV show. Maybe HBO or somebody can come up with a really good realistic series that can become part of my identity. Maybe a good Western. We'll be right back with David Horowitz. Okay, meat lovers, Beef Jerky Outlet presents over 100 delicious ways to get your snack on. There's nothing slim about these big flavors. This is high-end quality gourmet jerky in more flavors than you've ever thought possible. From wild game to pepper and spice to sweet and savory, there's something for everyone. Flavors like honey jalapeno, Cajun barbecue beef brisket, sweet bourbon traditional, Asian sesame, teriyaki, cherry maple, and peppercorn smoked beef, just to name a few. With Father's Day coming up, this is a total no-brainer for the guy in your life. Visit BeefJerkyOutlet.com for fabulous gift ideas. Plus, check out their phenomenal selection of rubs, sauces, and marinades. Beef Jerky Outlet at Tanger Outlets in Washington and their brand new location at Grove City Outlets. Beef Jerky Outlet, proud sponsor of the Jerk of the Week, heard every Friday right here on the John Stoggerwald Show. Check them out, beefjerkyoutlet.com. A couple of weeks ago, we had Rocky Blyer here to talk about his work with Miracle League in Moon Township. Fields for athletes with special needs. Jim Leland, the Pirates' former manager, is also involved in that project. Jim, thanks for being here. Great to be here, John. Great to talk to you. Tell me about the Miracle League of Moon Township. It's just a great thing for these kids, and it's a wonderful opportunity for people to participate. Some people are a little less fortunate than others, and I think it's just a great opportunity for people to volunteer and to help out and put a smile on somebody's face. I've seen the field that they put out in Upper St. Clair. It's amazing. Oh, it's unbelievable the way they construct these things. They have the ramps and everything for the kids. It takes a little stress off the parents. I think it's what Pittsburgh's all about. It's just a great thing. It'll serve Montour, West Allegheny, Moon, Swickley, Weirton, Steubenville, Beaver County, and surrounding communities. Approximately 100 to 200 children will be eligible to participate, and it'll also serve adults with special needs. So it's a great cause. And if you'd like to see how you can help, maybe donate some money, check it out at miraclesinmoon.org. Miraclesinmoon.org. We'll be right Right back. Have you tried digital marketing but don't know if it's getting you customers? Got different companies running your web design, social media marketing, and geofencing, but not sure which is working and which is a waste of your dollars? Contact us at Salem Surround, digital marketing experts who offer a free analysis of your digital marketing effectiveness and suggest methods that could dramatically increase your sales. We can put all your digital marketing under one roof, give you monthly reports on results, and instantly move your dollars to the most effective areas of your digital marketing suite. Social marketing, geofencing, web search enhancement, event targeting, and more. Now there are no limitations on where you can reach customers with Salem Surround. Total market penetration for increased ROI. Learn more by logging on to surroundpittsburgh.com. Surroundpittsburgh.com. Connecting you with new customers. Maybe you'd like to know what exactly Relief Factor is. It was created by doctors. It's a 100% drug-free supplement with four key ingredients that simply help your own body deal with the natural inflammatory response that it has. It's easy to swallow, four little capsules in each packet, like the packet that I carry with me at all times. Three packets a day for a week, then two packets a day for two weeks, and I have just described the three-week quick start. And you will know in three weeks, that's the beauty of it, whether it works, they don't drag you on. That costs just $19.95. There's a very good chance that a very serious percentage of my listeners suffer from some sort of muscular or joint pain. You should try this for $19.95. That's all you can lose. If it works, they will send it to you automatically. If it doesn't work, tell them not to send any shipments. And it's as simple as that. It is all at relieffactor.com. I've been using it for years now. Relieffactor.com. The John Steigerwall Show. AM 1250, The Answer. 
Well, we would need a lot more time than we have here to cover all the topics we'd like to discuss with our next guest. He's been around a long time, been a major voice in the conservative movement uh, and the best-selling author of lots and lots of books. His new one is Dark Agenda, The War to Destroy Christianity. It's, uh, we're talking about David Horowitz. He joins us now. David, thanks for being here. Oh, thank you. So is the, is the war on Christianity uh, still an undeclared war? It's the war on Christian America, uh, is the title, mm -hmm. and it's also the theme. This country was settled by 98% of the people who settled it and created our freedoms as we know them were Protestant Christians, and these were Christian ideas. So there was a war against Christians in this country. Um, carried on by leading contenders for the Democratic nomination, like the Buttigieg, who has attacked Mike Pence for his Christian beliefs. They are so bigoted, the left. I hate it when people call them liberals, because they're vindictive bigots. And he's the worst of them. Uh, be particularly because Pence reached out when, when Buttigieg uh, came out as gay. Pence, who was governor of the of Indiana at the time, uh, went out of his way to give him support uh, and praise him as mayor, which was kind of political hyperbole since South Bend, Indiana, is a mess. But uh, it was a, it was a very Christian gesture, should we say? And Buttigieg. Uh, we paid him by accusing him of being a, an anti-gay bigot. Uh, and that's because you know, his Christian beliefs, um, uh, marriage is between a man and a woman or something like that. That's the problem with the left that we, we see in America today, the Democratic Party. They're completely intolerant. They want everybody, it's my way or the highway. And if you don't agree with them, like if you think America, like every other country in the world, should have borders and should be able to vet people who want to come here to see if they're criminals or if they're uh, carrying uh, tuberculosis or any number of things, uh, if, you, if you are pr practical-minded and care about your country's sovereignty, then you're a racist. And of course, if you're a racist, you're an indecent human being and nobody should listen to you. You're a hate monger. Uh, and, and you need to be stamped out. And they, you know, if they get in power, they will create uh, laws making it a crime to disagree with them, they're, which they're totalitarians. My book, Dark Agenda, The War to Destroy Christian America, um, Documents. How this has been going on for 50 years, um, for 170 years until 1962. Uh, every day there was prayer in the public schools, but in 1962, the Supreme Court, which is the most dangerous branch of government, um, ruled it unconstitutional, which was ludicrous. Uh, Father Stewart, who dissented in that case, pointed out that the Supreme Court, it opens with this say, uh, with a prayer, basically, God bless the United States, uh, God bless this court and the United States of America. So they're all hypocrites. But the effect of it is to deprive Americans of knowledge of where their freedoms come from. Um, and, and every freedom that we cherish, equality, tolerance, inclusion, even diversity, are Christian ideas. Uh, and my book explains how that is so. Uh, also, uh, I mean, you can see how ignorant these modern, like I, I, I hate calling them liberals, these modern Democrats have become. <laughs> Because, uh, uh, you know, Elizabeth Warren, she's a professor. Of course, it's a wretched school, Harvard, um, racist school. But uh, she, she, she thinks that the Electoral College is a blight on 
on democracy. Not according to the founders. We've had the Electoral College for over 200 years. It served us well. It was created to protect the minority from the tyranny of the majority. Because while the founders invested the people with the sovereignty, the people in America are the sovereigns. We don't have a king. They also put checks and balances to restrain uh, the, the people because they distrusted them. It's a very, you know, it's a Judeo-Christian idea, of course, that we are corrupt in our natures and that we corrupt everything, government, religion, and so forth. So you have to be skeptical and you have to, you know, slow down uh, uh, you know the the mob. Well, you know she she um, uh, she 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 loses me when she says it's a blight on democracy because that's not what we have, and that's the electrical well, well, electrical that's the point. She is, doesn't understand what we right, have, right? And and why should she? Since it's not, you know, you can't make the you, if you're if, if you're a public school teacher, you can't teach your your students that the pilgrims were Christians and that they were fleeing religious persecution. The most sacred, most basic freedom we have is freedom of conscience, exactly the freedom that Buttigieg and the rest of these Democrats want to crush. It's the First Amendment for a reason. Right. Religious liberty is the basis of all our freedoms. If you can't, you know hold views that are your views and not uh, Elizabeth Warren's. Um, and if you can't defend them by expressing them, you can't defend any of your freedoms. So we have, a, you know, really an existential threat to our freedoms in this country coming you know, from the Democratic Party. And I apologize, and, David, for uh, getting your the, the titles, The Dark Agenda, The War to Destroy Christian America, Not Christianity. And well, I, uh, yeah, no, that... that a, there's a difference. Uh, it's, it's unique with me. Yeah. That perception. Um, you know, it's, it's how I came to this book when I understood that. I always saw the attacks on Christians as kind of parochial. It's one community. They're persecuting the community. But in writing the book, I came to see that it's an attack on America. It's not parochial at all. It's the central battle. And it's, you know, no accident that it was the evangelical community that elected Trump. If we had had Hillary, she would be calling all of us who don't agree with her uh, racist, sexist, homophobes, xenophobes, no Islamophobes, deplorables, and irredeemables. And that's her attitude. She is a witch hunter. She is an evil politician. And she gets away with it because she's a woman. And women are protected in our society. They have special privilege, obviously, even though it's very politically well, incorrect. Well, you talk a lot about identity yeah. politics, uh, David, and uh, that's where the Democrats are. And you mentioned uh, Buttigieg a lot here. It, would anybody outside of South Bend, Indiana, have heard of him if he were married with two kids? No, exactly. He, he, he pretends to be a victim. Gays are automatically victims and therefore innocent, even if the facts show they're guilty. They're, they're actually, a great, and of course, the majority of gays, of gays are decent. I'm talking about the political activists like Buttigieg. Mm -hmm. These people are vigilantes. Um, yeah, if he weren't gay, he wouldn't be, you know, third in line for the nomination, would he? No. I mean, that's, his, that's his whole... <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's just terrible. That's how he showed up. You you said identity politics will kill the Democratic Party. How? Yes. How will that? Uh, it's already killed the Democratic Party. It's not an American party anymore. It's racism. You know, our country is pioneered in the world in in attacking racism, ending slavery, um, and celebrating the individual uh, and, and judging people on their merits. Very difficult to do if you, you know, have any acquaintance with the last thousand years of human history. Um, but the Democratic Party has embraced 
a racist ideology which says that your skin color, um, your gender, and your sexual orientation are more important than anything. So if you're a white man, you know, you hear them attacking white males. That, that's where you got your freedoms, the white Christian males, actually. Have a little respect. Um, but the Democratic Party, it's a totalitarian party. It wants to stamp you out if you disagree with it. It can't offer a practical argument. They argue completely idiotic, on their face arguments like walls are immoral. <laughs> when yeah. they're all living behind. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's so crazy. But, um, you know, they've converted everything into, uh, you know, a race issue or a gender issue where they've already designated who's innocent. If you're a white Christian male, you're guilty before the facts are in. And if you're a uh, black Muslim uh, female, you're innocent even when the facts show you're a terrorist. Like Ilhan Omar, you're raising money for terrorist organizations, and you're preaching hatred of your own country. And she did, uh, you know, in terms of Bogadishu, yeah. where in the United States we lost, we sacrificed lives to rescue food that had been stolen by a warlord and give it to the civilians. And she portrays that as an American, and of course it was Clinton who was the president. Uh, Ilhan Omar. Uh, referred to that as an imperialist invasion where we slaughtered innocent Somalis. How can such a terrible person be put on the Foreign Affairs Committee by Nancy Pelosi or be even be allowed in the Democratic caucus? Yeah. They should shut her and kick her out, take away any privilege she might have for crying out tears. Well, uh, but, you know, the, the, they're protected by the, um, the fact that the media... Uh, just ignores that stuff. Not only ignores well, it, but yeah, promotes it. Yeah, they're a bunch of racist leftists themselves. Don Lamone, <laughs> all these crazy people on MSNBC and CNN. They're all racist. They hate white people, and it shows all the time. Well, you, you know, if you say old white men, you, you, you're, you're somehow indicting people for some invisible crimes. Yep. <laughs> We're talking to David Horowitz. He's the author of Dark Agenda, The War to Destroy Christian America. David, I only have a few minutes here. Uh, I have like two minutes, and I'm up against a hard break. You're a former leftist yourself. Uh, did you have an epiphany, or did you come to conservatism gradually? I was raised by communists. Wow. Um, I was a leader of the new left. I raised a lot of money for the Black Panther Party, bought a Baptist church, and turned it into a school for their children, and they murdered the woman who I recruited to keep the books of the school. I had created a tax exempt foundation to support it. And at the same time, the United States was forced to quit Vietnam and abandon our, our allies there uh, because of the left. And the communists came in and they slaughtered two and a half million uh, Indo Chinese peasants, and there wasn't a single protest from the left. Because there never was an anti-war movement in this country. It was an anti-American movement. Movement. They hate America. That was my epiphany. Yeah, I, I was alive for that. I, I was at Kent State in the early 70s. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. David, I only have about 45 seconds. And again, I'm going to have to bail out at, right at the time i got to go. Um, what, really quick, if you can tell me, what is the black book that you uh, have written? It's nine volumes. Uh, but you, you can go up to blackbookoftheamericanleft.com. They're all up there, the first chapters, the tables of contents. I've spent the last 30, 40 years atoning for my misspent youth <laughs> in the left, and uh, it, it's all, all about the left what? and how sinister they are. Americans are too decent-hearted. Hey, I appreciate People it, People are dangerous and malicious. David, I'm out of time. Thanks for being on. Good luck with the book, Dark Agenda, The War to Destroy Christian America. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. We'll be back. With SRN News, I'm Ron DeRochstra. President Trump leaves Washington in just a little bit to head to north-central Pennsylvania, where he'll headline a Make America Great Again rally tonight. 
Recovery efforts resumed today following severe storm that swept through a small Louisiana town over the weekend. As Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards toured Ville Platte, a small community about 75 miles outside Baton Rouge, following yesterday's early morning storm where a possible tornado damaged or destroyed at least 50 homes and businesses, safety was top of his mind. Quite often in these types of natural disasters, uh, when that's the case, we will have a serious accident or uh, even a fatality when individuals go out and start to clean up. He adds that thankfully no lives were lost. Ashley Godot, who was in bed at the time her home was ravaged by the storm, tells KATC TV she's lucky to be alive. How am I even standing here? We probably shouldn't even be standing in here. I'm Matt Small. This is SRN News. When it comes to your pain, many of you might be skeptical, like I was, about ordering Relief Factor. Pat Boone again for this wonderful 100% drug-free supplement designed to help your own body lower or eliminate occasional aches and pains due to aging, exercise, everyday living. I'm not skeptical any longer. The three-week quick start is now discounted to only $19.95. Why don't you let us see if we can get you out of pain, too, at relieffactor.com. Trade pros, whether you specialize in service or new construction, Ferguson knows firsthand how much work goes into a long day on the job, which is why we're committed to offering the products and solutions to get every job done right. With over a 1,000 locations, an unmatched selection of specialty products, tools, and supplies, our pro pickup and Samer next day delivery, you can trust that doing business with Ferguson will be the easiest part of your hard day's work. Visit ferguson.com to find a counter location near you. Dennis Prager explains the danger Israel faces. Iran, which has vowed to exterminate the Jewish state. 75 years after the gas chambers of Auschwitz, there is another place that wants to create a death camp out of Israel. And the Europeans are trying to do their best to do business with that regime. The Dennis Prager Show, weekdays at noon, right before Sebastian Gorka at 3 on AM 1250. The Answer. You're an insurance agent. You're also an entrepreneur looking to grow. And what better way to grow than by being your own boss? Owning your own Farmers Insurance Agency has been called one of the best small business opportunities in America. With a nationally respected brand, award-winning training, and your personal experience business coach, your opportunity to grow is unlimited. No franchise fees required. Visit BeAFarmersAgent.com and start growing. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Hunt Associates is your resource for examining the important financial aspects for your retirement plan. Listen to our podcast radio show, Hunt for Retirement, by visiting gwhunt.com. On this week's edition of Hunt for Retirement, we discuss securing lifetime income. Text HUNT to 555-888 or visit gwhunt.com to listen to the podcast now or call 844-366-HUNT for a free copy of the book, Income Allocation and a Free Retirement Income Report. Do you or your business have financial problems? Are you overwhelmed with debt? Then call me, Attorney Dennis Spire at 412-471-7675. My legal practice concentrates on bankruptcy law, debtor rights, and tax matters. I have over 30 years experience as a former United States Department of Justice bankruptcy attorney and lawyer in private practice. I have represented thousands of cases faced with financial problems and lawsuits. Reorganize and get a fresh start. Call 412-471-7675 or visit my website at DennisSpira.com. One in seven men is diagnosed with prostate cancer in his lifetime. The good news? When caught early, it can be treated. The bad? All treatment options have side effects, like impotence, urinary leakage, and rectal bleeding. New Space Or Hydrogel is FDA-cleared and clinically proven to help. Men receiving Space Or Hydrogel were more likely to maintain their normal sexual, urinary, and bowel functions. Visit spaceoar.org or ask your doctor about Space Or Hydrogel. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer. Lots of Monday afternoon delays. Parkway West inbound, stacking up Carnegie to the Fort Pitt Tunnel. Pretty typical outbound. Now, Parkway East outbound. That's seeing a delay. Boulevard of the Allies to Edgewood, Swiss Vale. About an extra 15 minutes for the trip there. 79. You'll see some slowdowns northbound from the Parkway North up to 910. Outbound 28 extra volume from the Parkway North to the Highland Park Bridge. An accident, Penn Hills, Frankstown Road at Orchard Drive. That's a look at traffic. I'm Jenny Robinson. AM 1250, the answer, weather. Partly cloudy and much cooler tonight, going down to a low of 44 degrees for tomorrow. Partly sunny, a cooler afternoon, high 65. 
Partly cloudy tomorrow night, lows near 50. Then for Wednesday, turning warmer again with intervals of clouds and sun. A shower or a thunderstorm will be in the area for the afternoon hours. Wednesday's high 77 degrees. With your AccuWeather forecast, I'm meteorologist Danielle Niddle. This is the John Steigerwald Show on AM 1250. The answer. Well, how about a little sports? Sort of. It's kind of what we do here when we do sports. We do sports, sort of. Um, and I take phone calls here in the second half hour. Don't have a guess. So 302-844-1250 if you're interested. Um, don't want to comment on what David Horowitz said or any of the stuff I'm about to uh, babble on about here. Um, the Pirates, uh, they've had a nice road trip. They won 7 out of 11 on the West Coast, uh, 3 out of 4 from San Diego. Started with like a 17-4 to four loss. And Josh Bell is the guy that everybody's talking about. Um, he has 14 home runs. He's hitting 333. He has 44 RBIs in 44 games. He's, he's putting up Willie Stargell-like numbers. We haven't seen numbers like this early in the season since Willie Stargell. Uh, who once hit 11 home runs in the month of April. So everybody's going crazy over this guy. He's a, a young guy, he's 6'4", 240 pounds, and he hits long, really good-looking home runs. But here's the thing about Josh Bell, and here's why Major League Baseball is dead to me. And it's uh, he's just pointing it out. This would be something that when baseball was my favorite sport, which it was for a long time, I would really be enjoying this. I would be looking for uh, if as, as a as a fan, I would have loved it. As a person covering the Pirates, I would have thought it was great that this guy was going to looking like uh, he was going to be a great star, going to be around for a long time, and I would be covering him. But because Major League Baseball is stupid and doesn't have a salary cap. The Pirates don't get to keep guys like Josh Bell. There's a, there are statues over there at, uh, uh, on the north side for Willie Stargell, Roberto Clemente, Bill Mazeroski. Um, there is not going to be a statue for Josh Bell. You know why? He might hit a ton of home runs. He might be worthy of a statue, but it won't be in Pittsburgh because he'll be gone. So the point of this is if, you're, if, if you are enjoying Josh Bell, you're a baseball fan, a Pirate fan, Go ahead and enjoy it, but enjoy it while it lasts because guys who hit like Josh Bell hit themselves out of Pittsburgh. You don't stay here. No salary cap. They don't going to pay them. They don't, They can't afford it, and it's only a matter of time. You're watching the beginning. The more home runs he hits, the less likely it is that he will be a pirate for a long time. Now, he's under contract. I think they have him pretty locked up uh, through the 2021 season, which is two more seasons after this. But if he's hitting tons of home runs, he uh, and uh, at this pace, I don't think anybody expects him to compete uh, to keep hitting him at this pace. But he's going to become this guys who hit home runs like this and you know, who do it for a couple of years and end up with 40, 50 home runs. Uh, they become 300, 400 million dollar players. They don't work in Pittsburgh. He's not going to stay here. It's not going to happen. So he'll they'll figure out a way to get rid of him. They'll do it as a rebuild. They'll say we got three great prospects for him. But if if he continues to hit the way he's hitting, and that's unrealistic in itself to just to consider that that that's a possibility. But he might. Some you know these guys these players come along. They hit home runs, and hey, he might he might become a forty home run guy. Um, and it's happened before. And somebody's gonna. If that happens, somebody will throw three hundred, four hundred million dollars at him, and it won't be the Pirates. He'll be gone, and the Pirates will have to get rid of him. And they'll they'll be able to keep him for a while with arbitration, but even those numbers will get so far out that the Pirates won't do it. And he's going to become a twenty million dollar player, and they're not going to do that. And he'll be gone long before he becomes a thirty or thirty five million dollar a year player. Which brings me to something else here because. Josh Bell is a rarity in baseball. He is a black American playing baseball, an African American playing in Major League Baseball. Uh, they don't come along uh, anymore, and they don't play baseball much, not like they used to. And so someone who uh, wrote a column for something called the Shadow League, his name is Karen uh, Phillips, K-A-R-R-O-N Phillips. It's a guy. Uh, I always... Ta uh, I was always taught to never go places I wasn't invited, he writes. And right now, it sure feels like the game of baseball is doing its damnedest to let black people know that we're not wanted in the game that we once made great. I don't know where he gets that from. Uh, 
baseball teams are in the business of putting people in seats. You think the Pirates are upset that the, that it's a black kid, an, Amer- an African-American kid, who's uh, putting these numbers up for them? You think they, they care one bit that he's black? It's ridiculous. They're, they're, they're the two statues that I mentioned that are in front of PNC Park, pretty sure they're both black guys, you know? Um, so it's it's absurd to think that they that the, the that Major League Baseball and or the Pirates would not want to have uh, more black players and would would be happy with the fact that black kids don't seem to be um, attracted to baseball. The historically black colleges and universities, HBCU, they call them, uh, baseball teams, uh, they aren't black anymore, according to uh, this guy, uh, Caron Phillips. Uh, it, it, the, this kid goes to Bethune Cookman. He's an infielder. His name is Clarence Carter. He said, I would have thought coming to an HBCU, t- uh, there would be more black people, but things aren't always what you expect. This kid goes to Bethune Cookman, and it's gotten so bad, according to this uh, story here, that Bethune Cookman had, there have been times this season when they haven't started an African American on a team at a mostly black college. Uh, and, and he says, this isn't just a BCC or HBCU baseball issue, as according to the NCAA, only 4% of college baseball players were African American in 2018. That's ridiculous. Uh, and it has nothing to do with them being made to feel uncomfortable or unwanted. They, 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 they would love it. They've, they've started these programs like uh, RBI, inner city um, uh, baseball programs, trying to get the kids in the black neighborhoods to play baseball. They're not playing it. Winston-Salem State announced in March that this would be the last season for baseball there. Howard, South Carolina State, and Morgan State, they're all uh, historically black colleges. They cut baseball in the, in the last few years. And this is what Curran says. It's trickle-down effect from what's taking place in the major leagues as African Americans only comprise 7.8% of opening day rosters this season, which is a far cry from the 18.7% in 1981. I'm old enough to remember the day that the Pirates in 1971, the year that they won the World Series, one of the three that they've won in the last 94 years, they started an all-black team. Every player on the field that day was black. Um, it was the first time that had happened. And I remember in the 70s, people used to use too many black players as an excuse for the Pirates' uh, attendance not being what it should have been. But I, my, my response to that always was, geez, I seem, to re, I seem to notice that the Steelers don't have an attendance or a popularity problem, and they seem to have a lot of black players. So that's a, that was that was never true. It says here, in 2018, before the season in which he won National League Rookie of the Year, Atlanta Braves outfielder Ronald Acuna Jr. was reprimanded because he had his hat cocked to the side during an interview. The Braves didn't think his appearance was professional enough. So this is this this guy, uh, Caron Phillips. Um, This is his attempt to show that blacks are not welcome because they're not allowed to act I guess what he considers to be black, which is t- pull, turning your hat to the side, which is a, uh, which to me is a blatant example of the soft bigotry of low expectations, where black people or uh, black f- uh, players are supposed to entertain the f- uh, white fans by acting goofy, and uh, you know so he should he should read what Jim Brown said about the way black uh, football players act and how it's uh, it's. It, it feeds stereotypes, and it's a bad idea. But it, that has nothing to do with why there aren't more uh, black players in baseball. Uh, last November, he says it was discovered that Major League Baseball donated $5,000, the maximum, rep- uh, to Republican Senator Cindy Hyde Smith after she publicly stated to a crowd, if he invited me to a public hanging, I'd be on the front row. That was another one of those... She's a racist because she mentioned public hangings and she's in the South, so she must obviously be talking about lynching. And it was just another stupid, hysterical attempt to paint somebody as a racist because of something maybe that she shouldn't have said, but had nothing to do with anything to do with uh, lynching or black people or anything else. Uh, and, he, and she said, if baseball really wanted us around, this is what the uh, writer of this piece says, 
the uh, the game sure does have a funny way of showing it. Um, just unbelievably stupid column, and and you really want to look into the reasons for uh, black kids not playing baseball, you could write a really good piece and do some research and find out why. Uh, and I'm sure there are plenty of um, very easy-to-find reasons why. Uh, one of them, I would say, would be that it's a lot easier for black kids to grab a basketball and uh, go p- and have a pickup game of basketball on an, uh, a neighborhood court than it is to find a bunch of kids to play baseball. The other thing is, uh, and this this will uh, annoy some people, but um, I thought I thought this for a while, and uh, there are plenty of people out there who will tell you, including uh, uh, black people uh, who have written interesting pieces about it. And I saw one just the other day, last week, and I meant to mention here on the show, about fatherless statistics and uh, the difference in the number of fathers in the home uh, and for black families in the last 30, 40 years. And baseball is a game that uh, you, you, you need. It helps to have a father around, a guy around who can show you how to play when you're a little kid and throw you the fir- have that first game of catch with you and show you how to stand in there and, and not be afraid of the ball and all that stuff. There's a lot more to learning baseball than there is to even football, but especially basketball. And it takes uh, patience on the part of parents and involvement on the part of parents. And I would say that, and, and I'm, I didn't do any scientific study on this, but I would say that would be one thing you should look at uh, that would be a reason for it. But there are a lot of cultural reasons for it that have nothing to do with Major League Baseball not wanting black players. Nothing could be further from the truth. They they would love to have some of these uh, – some of the athletes that you see, the black kids that are playing college football and basketball, you don't think the Major League Baseball would like to see those kids play in center field or third base instead of uh, a point guard or wide receiver or cornerback? Come on. Anyway, I thought it was a stupid piece. That's enough for sports today. Now I want to get into my man, Pete Buttigieg. He was uh, on Fox at a town hall last night, and the ratings, by the way, beat CNN and MSNBC combined. And then he said this about his decision to be on Fox and what he thought of Fox as a network. You know, a lot of folks in my party were critical of me for even doing this uh, with Fox News. And, and I've, I, I've heard that. <laughs> and, and I get where that's coming from, especially when you see what goes on with some of the opinion hosts on this network. I mean, when you got Tucker Carlson saying that immigrants make America dirty, when you've got uh, Laura Ingram comparing detention centers with children in cages to summer camps, summer camps, then there is a reason why anybody has to swallow hard and think twice before participating in this media ecosystem. But I also believe that even though some of those hosts are not always there in good faith, I think a lot of people tune into this network uh, who do it in good faith. That's nice of him to say that. You know, you could point out some ridiculous things said by hosts on other networks, too, that he's happy to appear on. But uh, I don't know about the comment that uh, he said about Laura Ingram because I didn't hear her say it and I don't know the context of it. But this stuff about Tucker Carlson said immigrants make America dirty. For him to say that on national TV with a huge audience and, and, and throw that out there as proof that Tucker Carlson is uh, xenophobic or racist or whatever he was attempting to do there. Uh, Tucker Carlson was talking about when there is where, in the areas where there are a lot of illegal immigrants crossing the border, they, they spend uh, lots of time there, they live there, and they trash the place. Uh, they, they, there has to be massive cleanup when they go to areas where a lot of them have been living, and well, it's understandable. They're out there living in the middle of nowhere, and they're dumping their garbage everywhere. That's what he was talking about, not immigrants making America dirty just by the mere fact that they're immigrants and they move into the United States. But the liberals will continue to, to pin that on him for the next 10 years. Meanwhile, here's Pete talking about taxes. When candidates, Democrats, uh, go out promising, as I think we should, that we're going to have major increases in investment in things like education, health, and infrastructure, we also got to be willing to say where the revenue is going to come from. And it's why uh, we really do need to entertain ideas like, a, a, I would say, a fairer, which means higher, marginal income tax rate on those earning the most, 
uh, a reasonable wealth tax or something like that to make sure that uh, people are giving back when they become enormously wealthy. Perhaps a financial transactions tax that uh, taxes these millisecond differences in, in uh, computer trades that people become enormously wealthy off. I'm not saying we ban them, but since it's not obvious how much real value they're adding to the economy, the least we could do is get some value for the American people. Just another idiot. Um, just when people become enormously wealthy, we have to make sure they're giving back. Who says that? Why? How much? I mean, is 40% not enough to give back? How about none? Zero. It's my money. Leave me alone. Uh, um, he's, a t he's just another liberal idiot. But did I mention he's gay? I think he's gay. I think somebody mentioned that he might be gay. But we have a new name for this guy. And you'll know it when you hear this song. Have you heard the crack of the bat, the cheers of the crowd? Have you seen the smiles on the faces of the players as they take the field? I'm not talking about the Pirates. I'm talking about what's happening in Moon Township that can only be described as a miracle. This is John Steigerwald. With the help of Pirates Charities and people like yourself, the Miracle League of Moon Township has broken ground on a brand new ball field and adaptive playground where athletes with special needs can play regardless of their ability. At miraclesinmoon.org, you can see the stunning plans for the 9,500-square-foot playground and state-of-the-art ADA-compliant restroom facility with showers, wave technology, multi-level fountains and sinks, mechanical changing tables, and more. It's incredible. Our goal? To raise the remaining funds they need to bring it home by first pitch this September. Check it out at miraclesinmoon.org slash donate and make your tax-deductible gift today. That's miraclesinmoon.org slash donate. This message paid for by Robinson Town Center, a Zamias Properties entity. If you're an employer, a business owner, if you have 5 to 100 employees, listen up. The cost of doing business continues to skyrocket, strangling your HR department with more regulations, administrative duties, and liability than ever. I'm John Steigerwald. Your health plan's a big part of that cost. Another year, another 10% rate hike, another $1,000 increase on your deductible, another hospital or doctor you can't go to because they're not in the network. Isn't it time for a change? Well, stop the insanity and call Marley Financial, the most innovative agency in the industry. Put an end to the annual increase. Give your employees a national network that all hospitals accept and reduce your monthly premiums by 20 to 30 percent. It doesn't matter when your renewal is. Marley can help today. Call 724-884-1496. Marley Financial, 724-884-1496. 724-884-1496. Oh, yes, yes, yes! Oh, where have you been? If you snore, the first time you use mute can be quite an experience. <laughs> I can breathe! I can breathe! Snoring can happen when your nose is blocked, forcing you to breathe through your mouth. Mute is a comfortable nasal breathing device designed to increase airflow through the nose by gently opening the airways. <laughs> Thanks to Mute, you get all the air you need through your nose and not your mouth, which means less snoring and more chance of sleep. Oh, that's the best night I've had in years. In trials, 75% of couples reported a reduction in snoring when using Mute. Available at Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid and other fine stores. To find your local store or for more information, go to MuteSnoring.com. Mute. Breathe more. Snore less. Sleep better. What's inside your mattress affects its price, comfort, and durability. But most mattress manufacturers won't show you what's inside their products because they simply don't want you to know. How can you know if you're getting the best value if you don't know how your mattress is made? At the Original Mattress Factory, we believe that transparency is what's best for our customers. So we have open displays of each model in our showroom so you can see and feel the difference in our products. Visit one of our local Original Mattress Factory stores to see exactly what we're made of. Not so long ago, all mattresses had two sides, and for a good reason. You can flip two-sided mattresses regularly, making them last longer than one-sided mattresses. So what happened to two-sided mattresses? In an effort to cut costs, most mattress manufacturers cut their mattresses in half. For nearly three decades, the original mattress factory has believed that building high-quality two-sided mattresses is the right thing to do. 
Visit us in one of our stores or at OriginalMattress.com to see how our products are built right and built to last. You're listening to The John Steigerwald Show on AM 1250, The Answer. Well, we could make this a daily feature probably. It's uh, transgender insanity. (laughs) Um, So a woman identified as male on a medical chart delivers a stillborn child. Uh, It says here, a woman gave birth to a stillborn child because doctors were, quote, thrown off by her decision to identify as a male. Imagine that. He was rightly classified as a man, wrote a lead author, doc, this is a, this is a, uh, the lead author of the report, Dr. Daphna Stromsa of the University of Michigan. But that classification threw us off from considering his actual medical needs. His. She referred to him as his. She just had a baby. You know what I mean? And you're referring to him as his. But here's the best part. Uh, this uh, Strosma and the other doctors reporting on the case said it's an example of the complications transgender people face when seeking medical treatment. They didn't say where or when the incident happened. A transgender health specialist attributed the failure of the nurses and doctors to properly handle this situation to implicit biases, in quotes, and told NBC News it's important for doctors and nurses not to throw out critical thinking. So when someone comes in pregnant, you shouldn't rule out the possibility that it's a man who's about to give birth. Transgender advocate Jillian Branstetter told NBC, there's not enough medical awareness regarding treatment of transgender people and blame this sort of confusion over treatment as a failure to, are you ready, recognize diversity. The consequences can be so dire, she said. Imagine this. People who went to medical school... They, they aren't aware that men can have babies. This is something that, when did, when did we start first, uh, when were we first told that men can have, it's been like in the last 20 minutes maybe, that somebody came up with that stupidity? And these people who went and killed themselves to get a medical degree, went through everything you have to go through to become a doctor, and there's something wrong with them because they don't know how to handle a man who, by the way, gives birth to a stillborn baby. Forget about the fact that, you know, how about the responsibility to the baby you had growing inside of you? But if you don't think, if you think there's something wrong with that, there is something wrong with you. Bye. John Steigerwall Show is a production of AM 1250, The Answer, and Salem Media Group. One in seven men is diagnosed with prostate cancer in his lifetime. The good news? When caught early, it can be treated. The bad? 